This is Duke University. I'm sure be a whole school year of advocacy and information about the North Carolina Amendment, among other things. Um, so just full disclosure, uh, Lauren is my partner. Um, we're engaged. Uh, and part of the reason that she's here today is because um, she's done a lot of uh, kind of research into this and is really interested, um, but is here as a community member, not as you know a representative of her work or um, or as a lawyer certainly. So, <laughs> but uh, we're also, if any of you guys are interested in some of the more legal nuances of the amendment, we have an event coming up on October 17th tentatively, and um, that will also be open to the wider Duke community and potentially the community at large. So keep your eyes out for that, um, and that will we'll be inviting lawmakers and uh, very special guests to come talk about how this fits in um, in the national kind of world of, of these marriage amendments. Um, so without further delay, Lauren Rogers. Woo! Thank you, Haley. <laughs> I've never used a wireless mic before, but I know that I paced, so sitting at the podium wasn't a very good option. Um, like Haley said, my name is Lauren Rogers. I do write for a political website, but that's not why I'm here today. Um, I'm here because I play soccer. And I play in the Durham Recreation League, and I'm out and open, openly gay to everybody in my life. And my soccer team, um, probably, I guess it was last Tuesday, they said, hey, we, you know, we heard about this marriage amendment, and we want to get involved. What can I do? And I blanked. And I had no idea what to tell people. And then I started getting that question from other people, right? And I'm asking Haley, and she's, you know, she's got DLJ and everything else, so she doesn't have any time to do this sort of thing. And I thought, this might be a great resource for members of the law school who maybe don't have the time to go back and look and see what are the different organizations, what can I do, what does this amendment actually mean? So I figured I would do the legwork for you guys, and the, you take it from there and let you get involved. Um, like Haley said, I'm not a, a lawyer, I'm not a law student, this is the first time I've ever been in a law classroom, mm -hmm. so you will absolutely embarrass me if you ask me any legal questions. Mm -hmm. I can feel them and I'll smile and say I don't know, I'll get back to you, but um, you know, like Haley said, uh, Outlaw's going to try to sponsor an event a little bit later in the year that focuses more on the legal aspect of this thing. So right now this is just, I was called to action because this matters to me, I want you all to know that it matters to you, even if you're not gay, even if you don't plan to stay in North Carolina. Um, and so that's why I'm here today, kind of my blanket sort of not a lawyer, not a legal speak. This is a get excited because something important is happening in your state where you're living for the next one, two, possibly three years, maybe a lifetime. So we're talking again about discrimination in the North Carolina Constitution. I am assuming that everybody in the room thinks that discrimination is a bad idea. Um, if you don't, then we can maybe talk offline a little bit later and I'll go into kind of more of the backstory about why discrimination is a terrible thing and why we don't want to put it in our constitution. So just so you know, that's kind of the baseline where we are today. We're going to talk about uh, North Carolina's amendment. We're going to talk about kind of gay marriage in a national sort of context, looking at what other states have done, um, and kind of where, where things are with that, and then again, how to get involved. So it started in, in North Carolina um, legally in the Senate in February. They introduced a bill that would amend Article 14 of the Constitution to say marriage between one man and one woman is the only domestic legal union that shall be valid or recognized in this state. And this caused a lot of waves because this is probably one of the broadest amendments that they could have put, the, like the broadest language in the world. And so people were up in arms, they were worried about um, private recognition. I used to work for Wachovia and Haley was covered on my health insurance in Wachovia. And so people thought that if we were here in, in North Carolina, that wouldn't be. So they would talk about private companies not being able to offer the benefits. I went back and forth a whole lot. This was in February. In September, the legislature added on this second sentence. It says, this section does not prohibit a private party from entering into contracts. I can let you guys read the rest. I can assume you can all read it. It's fairly clearly printed up there. So basically, what that amendment does is it, it did take it down a little bit in terms of how extreme the amendment was and how extreme the language and kind of how far reaching. Um, and so what it does is it does prohibit the recognition or validation of domestic legal unions except marriage. And that's fine, except in North Carolina that phrase domestic legal unions doesn't appear anywhere else in the Constitution. It doesn't appear anywhere else in North Carolina state law and it's never been adjudicated in the state courts. And so there's no precedent for what we mean when we say a domestic legal union. 
All right? So all we know right now is that domestic legal unions are, would no longer be recognized, and this would also invalidate domestic partner benefits for municipal and state employees. So right now, if you work for like the town of Chapel Hill, or Durham, or Carborough, your domestic partner can get full health benefits, that type of thing. So that would invalidate that. Like I said, a lot of this is up to interpretation right within the courts. And you guys know a lot more about that than I do. But basically, depending on what the judges decide, um, how things are kind of litigated, it could invalidate domestic violence protections for unmarried couples. It has the potential to interfere with existing child custody and visitation rights. And again, I'm getting my information basically from Equality North Carolina. I can direct you to their website if you have any specific questions. But it also might invalidate trusts, wills, and end-of-life directives because those are not technically legally considered to be private contracts. Make sense? So it's a lot more than gay marriage. It's a lot more than just uh, Haley and Lauren shouldn't be able to date. They shouldn't be able to get married in our state. We don't want that. This is, I mean, gay, straight, alike, it doesn't matter. This will affect your life. Somebody that you know in your life has been a victim maybe of domestic violence. Somebody that you know probably has children. right? Somebody that you know might have a private contract with somebody else. that They want to be able to keep that, keep that legalized. Um, I'm sure you've heard kind of the debate about North Carolina constitutional amendments. We're not the first state that's done this, okay? I didn't put a legend up because I figured I could, I could talk through it. Every state that is colored in some shade of red or black is a state that has a constitutional amendment banning gay marriage. And there are a couple different degrees of these different amendments. And this map, you'll have to excuse me, is only valid as of 2009. I wasn't able to, uh, to find a, a more updated version of that. So I believe the status of Idaho has changed slightly. Um, so essentially, the light red states, uh, they'd say the marriage is a union between one man and one woman, okay? The darker red states like Texas here are marriage is a union, or they say the same thing about marriage, defining that as a union between a man and one woman, and then say that, but civil unions are allowed, civil unions are okay. Domestic partnerships, okay, in, in every state pretty much on here, with the exception of Michigan and Virginia. And the language of the amendments in Michigan and Virginia are almost they're, they're very, very similar to the language in the North Carolina Amendment. So in terms of their preventing any domestic partnerships, any civil unions, any marriage, it's really, really broad and really, really far-reaching. Um, 30 states have put uh, an amendment similar to this to vote, and it's been voted in in all 30 states. So it is an uphill battle between now and May 8th when the primary is going to happen. Um, it's never been done before, but I really do think that North Carolina has, has a chance. And I think it depends on people like you who are going to go out and who are going to talk to people. You need to think about the way that you're engaging with the people, what the, you know, the words that you're saying. So if you're talking about lesbians versus gays versus homosexuals, you know, this language really matters. So I encourage you all to start having conversations. Talk to people that you know are friendly about it, right? Like maybe I'll sit down with Paige later and say, hey, let's, let's chat about this and let me kind of run through it and that sort of thing. And then the more you get comfortable with it, the more you'll be able to recognize the subtle differences in the language. Um, I'm an Air Force veteran, so I was very excited last week, or earlier this week, I guess, when Don't Ask, Don't Tell was finally repealed. Um, February, I think it was mid, early February, um, CBS and New York Times did a poll. And they asked people, do you favor or oppose homosexuals serving in the military? Strongly favor, somewhat favor, oppose, strongly oppose. Okay, so we're thinking about that word homosexuals, right? They asked the same group, do you favor or oppose gay men and lesbians serving in the military? And you, the favor jumped from 34% when, when they said the word homosexuals to 51% when they said the word gay, gay men and lesbians, right? The power of language is amazing. So that's the first point I want to drive home in terms of what can you do? You can start talking about gays and lesbians and not talk about homosexuals, right? Just in terms of when you're talking about the like, sexual orientation part of it, um, we'll get into kind of why this amendment is important for everybody else a little bit later. Um, North Carolina, okay, so public, polling, public policy polling, very well respected polling company. Um, they're actually based here in, in RTP in Raleigh. Um, September 1st through 4th, so literally earlier this month, they conducted a poll of 600 North Carolina voters. And this is why I think that it's, it's, it can pass in North Carolina. So they asked two questions back to back. And the first was, state legislators have proposed an amendment to the North Carolina Constitution that would prohibit the recognition of marriage, civil unions, or domestic partnerships for gay and lesbian couples. If the election was held today, would you vote for it or against it? 
and 55% that said that they would vote against it. And that's the exact language that they were asked, right? 55%. Sure, we have 15% that are not sure, but 55% is always going to be a majority. So we need to tap into that. We need to, and I think it's plus or minus 4.3% was the margin of error, but still, the possibility is there. When you compare that with, do you think same-sex marriage should be legal or illegal, 61% think it should be illegal, which is fine because gay marriage is already illegal in North Carolina. So that's really not the issue. This amendment goes so far beyond that, which is kind of why I want to talk to people and get you excited um, today. So why you should care about the amendment. The amendment causes real harm. Right? It's going to take people like me, and it's going to make me move to Massachusetts, or move at least somewhere outside of North Carolina so that I don't have to worry about protecting my family, you know, that sort of thing. Um, makes me feel like a second class citizen, right? It sends a message to our high schoolers who are already bothered by bullying, right? They're worried about what their hair looks like, what their clothes are wearing, and now their legislator and the people in their state are telling them, you're not good enough, you're a second class citizen. We cannot send this message to our kids. This amendment is damaging on so many levels. So many levels. It's bad for business, right? What kind of message is this sending to businesses who might want to relocate? We're trying to draw in business. We're trying to stimulate the economy. And you, yeah, you know what? You're probably not going to want, you're probably not going to want to be able to attract a lot of um, gay or lesbian, bisexual, transgender people to your business to work here in North Carolina because we have terrible laws. But, you know. I don't know, you look at somewhere else. Look at uh, maybe New Jersey, maybe Maryland. A business could easily relocate there. That's much better law. So it's bad for business. It's a distraction from the voters' priorities. Um, I didn't get the polls for this one, but I think it was about 60% said the economy, in North Carolina voters said the economy was their most important issue. Gay marriage didn't even make the top five. Okay? And our legislature is spending time on this. We really don't need it. Gay marriage is already illegal in the Constitution. Like, or not in the Constitution. It's, it's illegal. I mean, I've tried it, <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> we got yelled at, so definitely not a problem. And amending the Constitution is really hard to do. It was a hard process for them to get this amendment onto the Constitution, and it's going to take years, if it does go onto the Constitution, to, to work on an amendment. And if, um, if that isn't enough to convince you, The Onion did an article um, from 2083, and it was literally entitled, It's Pretty Embarrassing How Long You Guys Took to Legalize Gay Marriage. Think about your children and think about your grandchildren, all right? They're going to be embarrassed. They really are. And we're not even talking about legalizing gay marriage. We're talking about keeping discrimination out of the state constitution. So this is really something that you need to care about. The North Carolina primary is on May 8th. A lot of people say this is the Republican presidential primary. Well, it's the North Carolina primary. I mean, probably Barack Obama is going to get the Democratic nomination, so there won't really be um, a primary election for the Democrats. That's not to say that Democrats can't vote. You don't need to change your voter registration. You don't need to you know, become an independent or to become a Republican to, to vote in this. Um, if you're not registered to vote in North Carolina, please come up here. We have, not right now, but we have um, voter registration forms. You don't need a North Carolina driver's license. You don't need to have your car registered in North Carolina. Um, you do need to relinquish your voting rights in whatever jurisdiction that you're registered in, but I'm pretty sure that they'll do that for you. I'll have to check on that. Um, but yeah, May 8th, North Carolina primary. We need to get the word out. No is the good vote on the amendment. So because the question is, do you think that the Constitution should be amended to say marriage is between? So you say no. So I'll say vote no on gay marriage, even though that's <laughs> totally antithetical to what I believe. But essentially, you want a, you, you want a no vote. Um, Tomorrow is uh, North Carolina's Pride, which is why I pushed really hard to be able to talk to you guys today. Um, and I appreciate the media services and everybody kind of scrambling to find us a room. But tomorrow's Gay Pride. It's going around Duke's East Campus all day. Equality North Carolina is going to be there. They'll be registering voters. They'll be there to help. Um, you can sign up to volunteer with them, that sort of thing. There's also tomorrow night. It's uh, all of us North Carolina in conjunction with Equality North Carolina. They're doing an advocacy training workshop at the First Presbyterian Church here in Durham from 5 to 8. No registration. Uh, free child care provided there, um, and I believe there's a free dinner at uh, Vin Mala's Curry Blossom Cafe they're from five from five to six. Food. They're donating they're donating food. So <laughs> if you have the time um, tomorrow, go out to Pride. It's a great celebration. You'll get to see lots of different organizations and see what they're involved in. Um, October 11th are the municipal primary elections in North Carolina. Uh, it has nothing to do with the amendment, but at least the Durham City Council voted unanimously. 
um, and it came out unanimously in opposition to the election. So read up on your city council members, see who the incumbents are. I'm not going to advocate incumbents versus non-incumbents, but vote in, in the municipal primary elections because these people really control a lot of what happens in your life on a daily basis, kind of really, really local elections. And then on November 12th, um, Equality North Carolina is hosting an equality conference and gala. There's a subsidy for students, I believe it's $25 to register for the conference. And I think Haley might try to work with Outlaw and see if she can't get some, um, some money from Duke to sponsor students to go to this event. And that's really, that's an all day kind of training, like literally, what is our strategy? Like, you talk about gay agenda, this is setting and putting into place North Carolina's gay agenda. Like, this is what we need to do, this is what we need to happen. Um, you know, these are the different groups working on it. So what can you do? Other than talk to your friends, talk to people at your church, if you know anybody from rural North Carolina, that's going to be a huge help, right? Talking to them. Use Facebook, use Twitter, any kind of social media that you, you do use. Sam Parker is the, um, is the organizer from, I'm sorry, she's the organizer from Equality North Carolina. It's sam at equalitync.org. And then their website, equalitync.org slash action center, has a ton of information. You can get background on the amendment. They have a lot more of the kind of legalese stuff that you guys might be looking for in terms of the amendment. And then the ACLU of North Carolina, Kevin Eason over there is also kind of heading up, excuse me, their campaign um, on the ACLU side, kind of talking about how to fight things, looking for advocates. A lot of it is just talking to people. So you're going to be doing phone banks, right? Or you'll be maybe canvassing different neighborhoods that they know are kind of maybe in, in the air, that type of thing. So you need to get comfortable with talking to people. Um, and you need to not, you know, I guess kind of educate yourself about the, the right kind of language. And that's what those workshops on the last slide are going to do. It's going to teach you how to talk to people, how to be effective, and that type of thing. That's all that I had formally prepared. I really appreciate you guys um, listening. Does anybody have any questions or comments or general? Yeah. Oh, well, I was just wondering, is there a place, you know, I'm, I'm Francis Perez. My work in communications, room 4000. I'm happy to make um, voter registration forms available. Are they available in, to students on an ongoing basis anywhere? We, I mean, we have them here, like with us. I can, I can give you, I can, I can email you. It's like just, a, it's a one-page PDF. But somebody um, might want to put, in, put a notice if, if there's a student organization that takes voter registration. You might want to put a notice in the Duke Law Daily, and that just reminds people to register to vote because mm -hmm. it is increasingly important yeah. to get registered. Um, thank you. That's a great idea. Uh, I, I, I do have some here. What I'm planning to do is just print out a bunch of them and keep them in my mail folder and probably just send people to fill them out and put them back in my mail folder and I'll be sending out um, kind of piles of them as they come in. Uh, and then also just an additional note, if any of you guys want reminders to vote um, or reminders about upcoming events, come down after and uh, we'll get your emails. Any other questions come? I know this wasn't a super like engaging talk in terms of asking a lot of questions, but the main purpose was to kind of get information out there and then um, we can go from there. But anybody? So. Sorry. I, I have a quick question, yeah. Julie Thack. I'm from School of Medicine. Um, our, this is kind of, you know, 30,000 foot level. Mm -hmm. Equality sends out a lot of stuff. And mm -hmm. then this is kind of the first I've ever heard of even out while well, I've been here for four years. So <laughs> is there any connection between East and West Campus? Are there any listservs we can get out? Because there's certainly a lot of support. And I can tell you, I don't have a single student who's going to leave to go vote unless I tell them to leave and go vote or if they've been reminded somehow. So I'd love to know how we could maybe increase the communication just at the graduate school level. Yeah, that's a great idea. So a couple of uh, a couple of things. Duke Out is the graduate student uh, mm -hmm. umbrella organization, great. and um, my goal is to funnel a lot of this information okay. through them. So that'll hopefully reach out to the graduate student group. Also, the LGBT Center, um, which is the umbrella organization for all these groups on campus, including undergraduate groups, of which there are several. Um, they are uh, Jess Evans. There is their communications mm -hmm. person has been really helpful about forwarding information too. I do think it would be uh, a good idea and something that we're probably gonna try to start today is um, getting together an, really an email list of people that want reminders to vote, uh, which is simple. It's not gonna be you know tons of emails every week about why you should care because 
some people just want to get out on the last day and vote. So um, we'll probably get started with that. But I definitely appreciate the input. And if you want to chat about how the med school can uh, collaborate, then I'd love that input. Paige. How are, you, how are we reaching out to people who aren't in Outlaw or who aren't part of Duke Out, but would also sort of be interested in this or like you know, a vote? Uh, we're counting on you guys, partially. <laughs> so spread the word. Um, but uh, if you have any great ideas, I'd definitely like to get them. Uh, one thing that we want to make sure uh, of is that we aren't overlapping too much, um, that we aren't uh, driving people nuts with getting contacted by six different groups. Um, so part of our goal here, and then just sort of in general, is to partner with Equality North Carolina because they're really spearheading the no on one. Is it gonna be question mm -hmm. one? No on one effort. Um, but in terms of like within the Duke community, uh, I'd really love your input. I already have some plans to partner with the uh, Duke Law Democrats, but again, we wanna spread this word as far as we can go. <coughs> Have you guys thought about contacting Gypsy at all, or any of the other graduate student organizations that aren't necessarily directly LGBT related? That's a great idea. Thank you. Um, I we request funding from Gypsy, but that's about it. Uh, if if um, I've always kind of seen DBA, which is like the Gypsy version of just at Duke Law, and then Gypsy as funding. Or organizations, but um, yeah, certainly we clearly email they send out to everyone, which would be a great way to oh, great. Sort of get okay. the message yeah. out about this. You could always just do like host an event of some sort and have them put that on their yeah. email serve, and people will at least see the word equality. Great. Um, so just for the recording, uh, the suggestion was to get on some of the Gypsy emails and spread the word that way, which I think is a great idea. Was there a question in the back? Too? Was oh, there a question in the back? Yeah, just really quick. I mean, I know this is number one, so there we probably don't know what else is coming down the pipeline as other propositions or whatever to vote on. But is there any word on what other exciting things might bring out liberal voters rather than the Republican primary voters? Uh, just because I feel like it's sort of very strategic to put it in May. I, I, and I think that's exactly what it was, as strategic. You know, they could have put it um, to the general election vote. It was up to the legislature to decide which primary it went on and so I'm guessing it's because there's not a lot that's going to draw liberal liberal voters out. But really this shouldn't be a liberal voter issue, it should be a humanity issue. But, and, but I guess on the same line, uh, so I'm from the Nicholas School, I'm not in the law school, mm -hmm. but uh, it seems, I mean at least for us, we're, we're mostly gone by the end of May, or the end of April, so mm -hmm. uh, perhaps if we do voter registration drives, we should be doing absentee voting registration drives. Absolutely, and that's, uh, that's definitely on the list. Um, so for now, it's going to be get out the vote, like really just get people registered, um, but then absolutely, we're going to be passing out absentee ballots uh, at the end of the year. Yes, um, I'm an undergrad. And um, I've been working with some of the people in the LGBT Center for undergrad, and we have contacted the um, Board of Elections, and early voting starts on the 19th of April. So people will still be here. I know undergrads, what well, I don't know about, I'm graduate students, but 19th of April, early voting starts. Great, 19th of April, early voting starts. So that's definitely good, and we can probably try to pursue um, getting people to the polls if they'd rather not do absentee ballots. I don't know how the undergrads are working on voter registration, but are you guys having some sort of voter registration drive, or is there something that graduate schools can also help do in, you know, get, and we'll go on to the quad as well and try to help register people? There have been um, some events. I know the um, Duke Democrats have been um, around the center and, and such, um, registering people to vote. I know some uh, Blue Devils United have been registering people to vote on the quad and at the LGBT center, so they've been doing that. Okay. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I work with, um, I'm working with uh, Durham Democratic Women on this issue and among others. And one campaign that they've used to try, because women uh, have been known to sway elections in this state, is direct letter writing campaigns. And it is time consuming, but during the 2008 election, they reached thousands of women who they didn't know. They just had names as occasional voters, et cetera, and said, this is why it's important to come out on this issue on this date. Mm -hmm. For an issue like this, you could make it extremely targeted. You know, extremely, you know, do you know somebody who is lesbian or gay? And in fact, everybody does. And if you can put it in a 
postcard with a, this is a personal handwritten note. If you have the time to do those, I once did 25 of them, you know, in an airport, <laughs> just sitting there. So, excuse me, think about it. That's a great idea. And again, that's a letter writing campaign, handwritten notes, just to urge potential um, people that wouldn't go to the polls mm -hmm. or that would be swing votes to uh, come out in the right direction. Any other great ideas or, or comments, questions? I had a question about where a lot of the opposition is coming from and if there's maybe equality is leading some kind of targeted effort to talk with voters or people who might be on the vote no side in those areas. On the, the, vote, no, the, the vote, vote no side or the vote, vote yes vote, side? Vote no side, I guess, who might be allies uh, in those areas. I don't understand the question. Um. <laughs> The question, I believe, is whether Equality North Carolina or our organization or any organization is reaching out to um, our allies in places that are maybe not as supportive um, of LGBT rights and are maybe not aware of the impact of female. I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I think Equality North Carolina has a statewide presence in large cities like Charlotte and Greensboro, um, but I don't know kind of about the, their efforts in, in the rural communities. I know that they do canvass, well they were canvassing in neighborhoods, um, urging people to write their state legislators, kind of, and they would take, they would bus people out to, to the rural parts of town, but I think their main focus is targeting neighborhoods where there's a chance, like, where, where there's a chance that they'd be able to sway, kind of, and, and focusing on those, and, uh, Dean Belk, do you know more about this? A little bit. Um, my name is Jason Belk. I am the Dean of Students here. I'm also on the board of Equality North Carolina. I've been on the board for this year. Um, and yeah, they, we've been working since January, um, uh, um, going out to different counties, um, and collecting postcards, and, and I think we were hoping that it wouldn't make it to the ballot, candidly, <laughs> and, um, and we're caught a little bit off guard with the May compromise, because that had been floated, but no one really thought that that was going to be a reality. Um, and so we are, we're gearing up um, uh, uh, to hire a, a campaign manager to fight this campaign. Um, and they're going to have a presence. I would encourage you all. Equality, they do phone banking pretty much. They've been doing it up until this, the Tuesday that it, it passed every day. Uh, and they'll do it in the evenings. You can do remote phone banking, so they'll give you a list of numbers, and you can just use your cell phone and do phone banking, calling people around the state to do the things that, that like you described. Um, I'd encourage you all, if you can't, um, uh, go to the Equality North Carolina booth tomorrow to email Sam Parker. She will get back to you. Um, and ask her about how you can get involved. But yeah, they are gearing up to, 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 to concentrate on the areas where we think, I mean, there are metropolitan areas that are, are traditionally more blue, um, like um, Greensboro, Charlotte, Raleigh, um, and you think that trying to get those voters to actually come out and vote, because a lot of those folks are not probably gonna vote in the Republican primary, um, but then also trying to win the votes of people who are gonna vote in the primary, and they're doing all those things um, mm -hmm. and gearing up for it, and, we could use your help. Um, and so just a quick follow-up to Dean Bell's comment about phone banking. Um, if you go to the equalitync.org slash action center, you can sign up for opportunities. Um, and it's a lot of phone banking and uh, some other opportunities, including the meeting that Lauren was talking about after Pride tomorrow, um, the kind of organizational meeting and training. Just a note on the phone banking. Um, I know that I don't have a cell phone with a uh, 919 number or a North Carolina number. It's helpful to have that um, if you're uh, doing something to people with caller ID and things like that. And I think that Google has something where you can get like a 919 number. So if you're doing a remote phone banking with a non-North Carolina number, it would probably be very useful to have a North, a North Carolina number. And you Google might voice, that. Mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. and you might want to do that anyway, so you're not giving strangers your phone number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Is there some, some kind of coordinated way that we could do the phone banking so that it was really accessible to Duke Law students or whoever else was in the Duke community? You could, you know, potentially invite a friend who who is, you know, interested in it, but it doesn't, you know. I'll talk to Equality North Carolina and have them set something up with, with, with Duke Law, even if it's just like or a just night Duke or generally. something or Duke generally. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. It just make it as easy as possible for people to do this. Yeah. It's a little scary to think about sitting there by yourself. Right. But in a group, yeah. Could we add in, if there was a Duke Law specific one, have a training beforehand? Because it's hard to get no's and it's hard to know what to say. It's hard to know what to do when somebody like 
starts yelling at you on the other side. So. Well, I'll have candy also to entice people. So. <laughs> <laughs> you should be fun. No, that's but a yeah. great idea. That's a great idea. So uh, if we were to organize something here and then just in general, um, a, a training is obviously a great idea. I think that the Equality North Carolina phone banking, like the in-person phone banking, they would have some support for you too. So if you want to get involved um, with that, then then uh, we can certainly be a liaison. If you've never done it before or canvassing, I was afraid the first time I did it, but it's typically targeted towards people that they think mm -hmm. are going to vote your way. The goal is to get them to come out and vote. And so it, it's not as intimidating. You do get to know me sometimes. Yeah. Um, it's a little weird, but it's not as intimidating as it seems because they're, they've gotten a list of folks using all these algorithms or whatever to figure out whether or not they're likely to vote your way because you want them to come vote. Well, and, it, and it's good to do it in a group because you can hang up and laugh about it afterwards. <laughs> exactly. to you and, and it's sort of a bonding activity. <laughs> Definitely. Any other comments or suggestions? Question? Just one other thing. I, I mean, I know you mentioned Duke Out, but Duke Out right now is almost entirely just social mixers. Um, it seems like this group is taking the lead right now on kind of doing more substantive, uh, goal-oriented stuff. And it'd be interesting to talk with all the other grad groups and the undergrads as well to come up with like maybe a committee to bring up some coordinated efforts for this. I mean, I think. I think with Duke's resources and UNC's resources and all the different school resources, we could probably even bring in some big name speakers to do like pep rally type events to mm -hmm. get people pumped for it later in the spring. Absolutely. Were you going to ask? <laughs> no, I think that's a, that's a really good idea. And Ryan Finnegan, who's um, kind of in charge of Duke out, he and I are in touch. And um, we're, there was sort of an initial leadership meeting that was poorly attended, partially, I mean, I was out of town for it, I couldn't go, um, but we're gonna, we're gonna definitely meet back up. And I think that's a really important point because to prevent just redundancy, doing what each other's already doing, but then um, to have more strategic plans and, and funding even to get the big names to come. Um, the October 17th event, I will note, is gonna be really geeky, and I think you'll all love it, but it's definitely going to be lawyer stuff, um, talking about some of the legal implications of, of this. Uh, and then once we get a little closer to the big day, um, whether it's early voting, uh, like you suggested, or um, closer to the end of the school year, that's when we're really probably going to push some of the rah-rah events. Um, and then I do think it would be a great idea to pair, to get together with Duke out, but more importantly, the LGBT Center and the undergrad population here, because they're huge. I mean, they're a huge population of Duke and probably have a lot of time uh, to devote to, to something like this. So definitely a good suggestion. I don't know if the LGBT Center here does it, but um, back at my alma mater, we had certain training programs for like safe space areas. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's done here, but maybe this would also be a good time to do those so people who are interested in, you know, showing that individuals can come to them and talk to them and at the same time it'll be a more of a presence issue as well since you know there'd be more safe uh, space trained people mm -hmm. and that would also raise awareness about the issue yeah that's actually a very good point um there is ally training mm -hmm. in the lgbt center that's what they call it um and i don't know if dean bell if you have more information on that but there's they email me pretty regularly um, with ally training and that's something that if, if you guys want to get more involved in Candace I know you've done a lot of uh, a lot of kind of ally training but not just focused on this issue kind of more generally um, if you have any suggestions on getting people involved in that then well, you mentioned that when I was thinking I don't know how feasible this would be but at UNC when we did ally training you would get a placard or something that you could put on your office mm -hmm. door and maybe we could do something like that here with the lockers to show mm -hmm. support mm -hmm. well, like for support mm -hmm. for stickers and buttons. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I know that they do have that at the mm -hmm. university. Yeah. 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 For staff, I know that they do. Yeah. I'm not sure if they do for students. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I know they, there was a, also an effort with LL last year to um, at one point to like get stickers distributed. I don't know that it ever really got very far, um, but hopefully we can renew that. Uh, and part of the reason why this upcoming event is going to be on Monday the 17th is that week is 
Ally Week officially, <laughs> and the week before is uh, there's Coming Out Day. I think it's on Thursday, but um, I would encourage you all if you are on campus during that uh, uh, what's the Duke Law Fall Break, but I believe it's October 14th. There's going to be a big Coming Out celebration on um, the undergrad campus, so you should go check it out. Um, just a comment and a question, I guess, sort of. And Paige, to make you, it's Paige, right? Yeah. Um, I'm Matt O'Connor. I'm not a student here on campus at all. I work full time. My fiance is actually a medical student. This is my friend Jeff, so this is how I heard about this. But um, Andrew's over at the med school. And, uh, what, how are you guys connecting with the hospital? Because there's, uh, obviously, I won't throw names out there, but there are doctors in our community. And I think that would be a great way, like possible good avenue for us mm -hmm. for exposure. That's, a, that's a, a really good suggestion too. And I know it's been notoriously um, difficult with just schedules, honestly, to, uh, to really get the medical school involved. Um, but we should pursue that. And whether it's a medical school or the hospital, right. um, just spreading the word throughout the community. The hospital is one of the one of the uh, best opportunities for like kind of outward um, exposure to the Durham community. So that's a that's a good point too, um, which maybe we can chat about. So thank you. All right, um, I think that should wrap it up. Please come down and get a voter registration. Again, you don't need to have a North Carolina license. Um, it's not hard. It's a one-page form, and uh, spread the word and sign up down here too if you want to get emails um, to remind you to vote or to get more information. We'll maybe have like two check boxes. So thanks very much. Produced by Duke University. Online at duke.edu.